here and speak to you and to so many high-level representatives from different uh, countries. And I'm very happy to be here in front of you, members of uh, Parliament, because I spent uh, almost 20 years uh, in the Finnish Parliament. I was member of Parliament uh, for a bit more than 19 years before I started in last uh, August as the Deputy Secretary General of the OECD. And I really have the feeling that you can leave the Parliament, but the Parliament does not leave you. So inside of me, I will always be partly a uh, member of uh, Parliament. It's also nice to have this very good cooperation between the OECD and women in parliaments. We had a very good session in February in Paris during the OECD Global Parliamentary Network and happy to continue those discussions which we had there here today. And also I would like to thank the European Commission and especially the African Union for their kind support. We are indeed a long way from leveling the gender playing field. All over the world, women and girls continue to face discrimination, exclusion, poverty and violence. Everyone's efforts are needed to solve gender related issues once for all. Gender equality is truly a universal concern. Empowering and encouraging women to participate more fully in the society is essential. Gender diversity in public institutions is particularly crucial given that these institutions make decisions and create rules that affect people's rights, behaviors and life choices. Ensuring that decision-making bodies reflect the diversity of the societies they represent guarantees a balanced perspective in designing and implementing these rules. Investment in women boosts economic development, competitiveness, job creation and GDP. Let me give you just one telling example. We estimate that on average across the OECD a 50% reduction in the gender gap in labor force participation can lead to an additional gain in GDP of about 6% by 2030, with a further 6% gain if complete conversions occurs. Women's skills are not being utilized to their full potential, and this harms our growth prospects. And we are not just talking about economic prospects. Equal participation by women fosters more equitable societies and increases our well-being across the board. My organization's contribution to this worldwide effort is to help feed and stir the public policy debate and generate benchmarks that our member and partner countries may commit to adopt. Our commitment is reflected in the OECD Gender Initiative as well as in the OECD recommendation on gender equality in education, employment and entrepreneurship. We are constantly updating and innovating our analytical tools to better understand gender inequality. We notably launched earlier this month the ABC of gender equality in education, aptitude, behavior and confidence. The report shows that girls and boys remain deeply divided in career choices. For example, less than one in 20 girls considers a career in science, technology, engineering or mathematics compared to one in five boys. Despite similar performances in the OECD's PISA science test. <coughs> We also released the second edition of the Social Institutions and Gender Index, which explores the social norms that, that present real barriers to progress on gender. This is an invaluable tool to policymakers worldwide, and I hope that it is used. It was initially produced for developing countries, but we have extended it to other countries like OECD members in 2014, again, because 
discrimination is a universal issue. We believe that Ziggy can be particularly valuable in the context of the post-2015 agenda. Helping to close the gender gap at the top of governmental positions is also one of our key priorities. New leadership must strive to adapt and effectively respond to citizens' fast-paced needs in our societies. There is now a body of evidence demonstrating that gender diversity in leadership is a key factor of better performance. Companies with more women leaders perform better. When women thrive, businesses thrive. Gender diversity on corporate boards improves performance. In the public sector, data to lower levels of inequality, additional confidence in government, or increased spending on health in countries with a larger number of women ministers or in legislatures. We have made several reports concerning this area, and reports' findings suggest that despite notable progress, there is a huge gender gap in decision-making posts in all branches. <coughs> they also point to a range of internal and external barriers to women's leadership in public life. Internal barriers linked to women's capacities are mainly due to gender stereotypes and gendered social roles. Changing women's perception of their own capacities and possibilities beginning at an early age is catalytic to crossing gender roles and stereotypes and gives girls who are to become women the encouragement they need to pursue leadership positions and work in areas typically considered to be a man's domain. External barriers to women's empowerment are linked to systems that are not adjusted to women's or families' needs. And in overcoming these barriers and eradicating gender stereotypes, law and policymakers play a major role, especially by making effective use of existing tools for gender-sensitive law and policymaking, such as gender impact assessments. For women seeking elected positions, barriers can exist in the type of electoral system that exists, voter preferences, access to finance for campaign, internal party dyna dynamics, and in candidate supply. So the question is, what needs to be done in order to improve gender balance in public life and in to empower women to serve in key decision-making positions. We have identified several good practices. First, affirmative action measures, such as gender quotas as transitional and correctional measures, can be used to accelerate women's representation in any level of government or as political candidates. Quotas are often criticized for going against democratic principles creating division between men and women, and not being based on merit. Quotas are subject to certain conditions, but they have been proven to be highly effective in closing gender gaps. And rather than stigmatizing women and creating division, they have been successful in catalyzing the election of increasing numbers of women. They should be viewed as a positive discrimination measures used to counteract deeply rooted and sometimes, sometimes unnoticed negative discrimination and st gender stereotypes that have become the status quo. Second, making parliaments more family friendly are key to fostering women's participation. Measures to do so can include ending parliamentary businesses at reasonable times reorganizing schedules to account for family responsibilities, and, and spreading parliamentary business over a short number of days. For instance, Sweden's Riksdag prepares its parliamentary calendar a year in advance and undertook an internal audit to determine its gender sensitivity. So congratulations for Sweden for yesterday's award. The 
Canadian Parliament's three major assurements are scheduled to coincide with the school calendar. Third, measures such as effective sponsorship, mentoring, building confidence and access to networks have helped to empower women. In addition, strengthening men's and society's understanding that the participation of women is beneficial for the society at large is key to supporting women's empowerment. To empower women and fully leverage their skills in the global economy, we need to advance the use of gender impact assessments for all policies and laws. We also need to improve our data to ensure we have robust evidence to measure progress on gender equality. A whole-of-government approach is crucial to advancing the role of women in government and will ensure that gender considerations are more systematically embedded in all policies, from access to financing, to improving the work-life balance, to education and to entrepreneurship. We also need to consider the impact of current initiatives such as gender responsive budgeting. Progress is slow and we support bold actions in this area, like the law passed by Germany that imposes companies with employee representation on supervisory boards to allot 30% of their seats to women. Ladies and gentlemen, the OECD is strongly committed to move this agenda forward and we propose to engage with parliamentarians in implementing a joint compact on gender equality in political life, building on good practices amongst countries. The compact would aim to leverage knowledge and encourage parliamentarians around the world to make better use of existing tools for strengthening women's capacities to serve as effective parliamentarians improving their chances of success by reviewing electoral procedures and stimulating interest and capacities of women to become potential candidates in elections. To support these efforts, we have currently pre preparing the forthcoming OECD recommendation on gender equality in public life, which focuses on three main areas, good governance and accountability for gender equality, closing leadership gaps in public life, and equal access to public employment. And it will likely include components on women's representation in parliaments and gender-sensitive parliaments as well. We are hoping to be able to engage with you in refining the provisions of the recommendation in making it a truly international instrument that can help enable equal opportunities for women in public life across the world. However, I'd like to underline that the fight we are in does not only depend on others. It is also up to each and one of us to embrace this effort. I would like to invite all of us to ask ourselves the following questions. What empowered me? What inspired me? And what helped me develop my potential? And what were the barriers I encountered along the way. Today's distinguished audience, I have the pleasure to address. I'm sure you are already uh, now, you already now show the way, lead by example, and make sure that both women and men share their experiences with the younger ones. Gender must not constitute an obstacle, but a strength and an asset of our societies to be more inclusive, resilient and equal. Thank you for your attention.